One of the things that we've also heard a lot of different CIOs talk about continuously is the, you know, not only has AI helped their business, you mentioned that its role there, but also more automations. Uh, the fact that automa- more and more companies are investing in automation, not to, like you said, like many CIOs have said, not to replace people, but to like lo- unlock people's times to work p- to work on other tasks when there's any type of, uh, you know, repetitive task. They, they're trying to automate those things. Is automation going to play a big part, you think, in in what you guys are doing to provide these services to all these communication tools that everyone's now relying on? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of the automation is going to come from two things. It's going to come from um, better data and and machine learning. And right. So I think we've been really doing a lot of work in this space. Like I was saying, a lot of the AI machine learning work in the past was in the product side and now it's going into mm-hmm. the business side. And so as an example, we built this platform called um, AIQ, which is like a, it's it's essentially the big a big brain that supports all of our um, service channels, our support channels. And so what we did there is we took the same machine learning technology that we built in the voice remote, right? Where you talk into the voice remote and we figure out, con- we basically figure out what your intent is by doing speech to text and then natural language processing. We figure out what your intent is. We're doing the same thing now for our uh, Xfinity Assistant, which is a chat bot. So if you went onto our website and um, started typing into Xfinity Assistant, we're changing that text over to intent. We're figuring out where your intent is. At the same time, we're pulling down all this data that we have about you in terms of whether there's outages in your area. We're looking at the telemetry of your equipment. We're looking at whether you recently you know, called a call center or had a tech come out. So we're figuring out the context around you as a customer, as an individual customer. And then we've got algorithms that then try to figure out what's the next best step for you as an individual customer to resolve some of your issues. What we have is we, we, we built that as a, as a chat bot for you know, customers to interact with digitally, but then it's also a sidecar for if you wanna actually talk, either chat directly with a human agent or you wanna call in, it's a sidecar, so it's it's like you were saying, it assists the the human agent with giving them information and suggestions to make their jobs easier to help our customers. And so there's just a huge amount of potential, I think, around doing that kind of work of, of combining sort of data, contextual data about customers and algorithms and rules to basically improve the customer experience. For yourself, when you think of your when you think of things outside of maybe even outside of Comcast or goals for Comcast, how do you envision or what in your, could you explain like a dream state of where you want this, so these services to get to? Like, what would it be like to use these services in the future? Because I think I speak for myself always, but you know, I want more companies to of course adopt AI and ML technology. If it makes the customer service exchange easier, I was, you know, I think we've, we've had plenty, plenty of, People on our show to all talk about, hey, what's a good experience? What's a bad experience? I think we've all been on the wrong end of a bad experience. Uh, usually yep. has some level of like, hey, it does like whatever the bot, it doesn't understand what I'm typing or it can't figure out the answer or if there's too many hits of the knowledge base, not specific enough. I like to always use my case with Intuit when I was trying to issue a person a refund. It kept thinking I wanted a refund. It's like, I don't want a refund. I want to give my customer a refund. How do I do that? <laughs> and it like kept being like, to qualify for a refund for your subscription. I'm like, I don't need a refund, man. But eventually we got that solved. But that's one of those things that's really hard for anyone to figure out because when we as customers are on the other side typing to a chatbot, we tend not to be very specific. You know, we'll type in words like refund. Like that's literally all I typed. You know what I mean? You got to figure right. out well, right. what kind of refund are you figuring out? How do you see like the future in your world, a dream experience when it comes to customer service? Because you already said 97% of your service requests now are digital. Like, so the, the, the idea that people are going to call in the future and explain themselves seems unlikely. <laughs> like people don't yeah. want to do it anymore. <laughs> I mean, I think I, th- I think the dream experience is that it's it's personalized and proactive. So I think that the proactive piece is really key. We're, we're getting better at the personalized piece, like I said, by pulling in all this contextual data. But the, the proactive piece is the part that we just, you know, we're really leaning into heavily now. And the idea with the proactive is we're going to anticipate if you've got problems, if you've got issues. And so, um, for instance, we, we, we have a program going on right now where we're using telemetry. We're looking at the telemetry associated with, with your devices. And if we see anomalies 
in advance of anybody calling us or contacting us, if we see anomalies um, that make it, make it appear to us that you have a bad connection, we'll text you and let you know that it looks like to us you're having a bad connection mm. and you want to schedule a tech to come out and you'll get a text message. And then if you just say yes, you pick a time um, through the text message and we schedule a tech to come out to try to proactively address your problem before you even contacted us. Me as an individual, that's the way I want it to work, right? Yeah. I want to be on a, a Teams call or or a Zoom call, and I'm and if it's if I start to see a couple blips, how fantastic would it be to get a text message from my service provider and say, "Hey, I just realized I think you had a couple blips. Do you want somebody to come out and take a look at that for you?" Or we knew we just realized there were a couple blips, and we've already fixed it for you, right? That's and that that sounds like it's pretty far out in the future, but we're already running pilots on that. And um, I'm, 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 I'm really bullish on our ability to do that. Listen, as an avid sports fan, I can't wait. Cause I have converted to stream, right? I'm one of those, I'm one of the people that have cut the cord. Although people say cord cutting makes no sense. Cause you clearly have, I have internet to my house, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I rely on stream. So I would love, I would love that. Right. Cause I've, I think everyone's been there where they're trying to watch or consume a piece of content and, the connection for whatever reason doesn't work. Of course you would want someone to be proactive. Like we don't, as consumers, we don't want to know there's a problem. We just want it fixed, right? Like we just want everything we use to work, you know? So like the, the idea that we can get to a place where that's more proactive. I mean, I think every customer (laughs) will love that. And I think it's really important because we know there's like silent sufferers out there that have problems with their connection or problems with their service and they don't call up and they just sort of say like, well, I got a problem, but you know, hopefully it'll go away, right? Yeah. And a lot of the proactive activity is to really, is to get to the bottom of that so they're not silent sufferers, so we take care of it before um, they even realize they have a problem. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel for more great IT thought leadership. And thanks to our partners at Salesforce Platform for making this show possible. Go to salesforce.com slash newsletter to discover timely insights and useful tips tailored to your role.